Good evening. My name is Alexander Hagen. I'm the CEO of a medium-sized tech company in Silicon Valley. Previously, I was a financial analyst and financial journalist and research engineer in telecommunications. Tonight, I want to speak to you about uh, part two in a series analyzing the House midterms, where uh, there are now 10-hour revolution, Bernie Sanders, progressive Democrats entering uh, Congress, uh, which uh, we will um, exhibit here. These are the 10 Bernie Sanders people, Raul Grijalva, et cetera, et cetera, of which three are incumbents. Um, they all uh, came in to uh, the ones that actually won. Uh, were contesting in a previously Democratic held territory. The ones competing in the um, red districts were not successful yet. And I've covered all this already. And I want to contrast them to the 10 uh, so called national security candidates, the CIA Democrats, who uh, won. They ran 32 of their people, 10 of them won. And um, we have to look at these people, what's unique about them. And um, so. These people are very senior level people in the national uh, security establishment. Um, and uh, in the last episode, this lady, for example, Alyssa Slotkin, she, um, she worked for John Negroponte. John Negroponte is a bone chilling or blood curdling uh, uh, resume. He was uh, repressing progressive third world movements all over the world with death squads, torture, uh, CIA operations, invasions, assassinations. He was deep in Iraq. She worked for him as uh, his second in Iraq. The lady after that is a deputy admiral of the uh, Pacific Fleet, the uh, flag admiral or something like this, uh, like the number two for the Atlantic Fleet, oversaw relations with Russia, um, and, um, and so forth and so on. And... Uh, what we concluded at the time might have left it open that you would think these people were somehow uh, highly effective candidates to flip nine or ten districts out of 32 uh, that they ran in, and uh, uh, they only got ten total, so nine of them were red. They were not competitive in blue, apparently. We have to go through the other 22 and verify. Uh, so then we look at the money. Uh, that's the next step in analyzing uh, this situation, and there we find some shocking revelations, of course. So when we look at the money of these national security folk, first of all, uh, my congressman here in California, the one I follow, uh, he's no longer in my district, he raises a million, million and a half, something like this. Um, so these are really eye-popping numbers. Um, we see the first one, which is Jason Crow. He won, he outspread his opponent uh, by 50%. We have this Elena Slotkin, who I mentioned, the one who worked with uh, John Negroponte. She raised six million, outspending her c opponent. Um, Mike Sherrill raised seven million, vastly outspending his. Although we have to look in some cases at the primaries as being where the big uh, blood was let, but that's unlikely. Um, Tom Malinowski outspends his Republican opponent two to one. So these are massive numbers. So who is giving them this money? So. Let's confine ourselves to two examples, uh, Slotkin and, uh, I mean, you can take your pick, but we'll look at Slotkin and Cheryl. Uh, so when we look at Slotkin, what we want to, we can look at just the raw numbers initially. Three, uh, this guy uh, raised and spent three and a half and she raised and spent six and five. Um, the majority of her money came from large individual contributions. Uh, the uh, majority of his came from PAC contributions. Um, and um, so if we then go and look at outside spending, uh, this is very interesting. So in this case, we've got $11 million of spending. It looks like $6 million is opposed to her. And to verify whether that is so, uh, we can sort by the amount. And uh, see the NRC put three million in, um, and um, apparently is, it, uh, it appears like it's negative advertising, but that's three million, National Republican Committee. Independence USA PAC, I think this is Michael Bloomberg, um, and he seems to be behind 
a roster of these candidates. So if we look at what races they're in, they almost exactly correlate to these national security uh, guys. And then the interesting thing is you go, oh, but why is he putting all this money in for Rohrbacher? Okay, so these are, are, are these all attempts to defeat these people? That's the problem, for and against. So this is showing that he spent for Rohrbacher four million for him. But in fact, it's four million against him. Bloomberg took down Rohrbacher, and um, that's because Rohrbacher is not anti-Russian, and it lines up perfectly with these national security uh, interests. Um, I made a screenshot about Rohrbacher right here. Bloomberg Big Bucks is torpedoing Rohrbacher. So I'm a bit confused here. Um, but uh, we do see Michael Bloomberg coming into the picture, and he appears to be supporting these national security Democrats and attacking Rohrbacher, as far as I can tell. Um, and there's as much or more money in this outside area as on the inside area. So total for Democrats, 28 million. Total against Democrats, zero. Total against Republicans, 9 million. Okay, so uh, Houlihan, okay, for and against, I see now. So there's this spent amount, there's Rohrbacher. Okay, now we're getting our lesson here. And here's what it's for, it's opposition. Pete Sessions, opposition. Um, Steve Knight, opposition. Um, and um, let's see here. Lizzie Fletcher is massive. Carolyn Bordeaux is massive. Do these people show up on the National Security Democrat list? Uh, so hopefully I still have, okay, we have to remove the filter here. Um, blanks, we're now adding blanks in. And now we should see a bunch of people. Okay, let's do one more time. Be 32 of these people here. Okay, so let's see data. Turn off filter. There we go. Oh, Richard Ojeda, Soderberg, Morgan, Hagar, Engra, Bretson, Bayer, Harbach, Well, Kopser, Morse, Colvin. So these are the other folk that are involved. Anybody else we want to look for? Uh, also, uh, Sergeant. So that's about it. And then we look at the spending of this group. Uh, I don't know if you can uh, see these names or not, but the ones that we know, Mickey Sherrill, two million bucks. Uh, that's the next one we look at. Elena Slotkin, two million bucks. Um, let's look at the ones that won. Uh, Spamberger, Soderberg. Here's Soderberg, and I think we just saw Soderberg over there. Yes. So it uh, lines up. Uh, and this is Michael Bloomberg's uh, pack. So is he behind this? Or is he fronting it? Or what's going on? So then we want to look at who does contribute to these people, the typical contributors we see with Bishop. A bevy of uh, sort of financial companies, general Fortune 500 companies, banking companies, the dreaded Comcast. Um, the, you know, the local is AT and T here. Yes, uh, the local uh, infrastructure companies, um, New York Life, um, Price Waterhouse Coopers, and then she's got some Stanford University of Michigan, 67 grand. So that's something I learned that we have universities uh, contributing at this level. So uh, your student uh, uh, tuition at work, uh, Emily's List of Women's Group, Stanford, it all looks quite nice. Alphabet is Google, uh, Bain Capital. And Alphabet and Bain show up uh, uh, essentially uh, with a lot of these. For some reason, the League of Conservation Voters, the Bushes, so you really got to wonder when you've got the Bushes and the League of Conservation Voters, 
both uh, funding somebody. Um, uh, so that is, then we looked at outside spending. We can also look at the patterns of geography, and this has been a tendency, is that the Republican is more in-state. You see, almost all the money for Slotkin is coming from out-of-state, and I think a hell of a lot of it. So let's see about her PACs, if there's any massive PAC funds or not. Um, very little uh, PAC money. The bishops got the PAC money, and then this outside spending um, well, we saw this already, um, so we've got the, and so she gets a cool check from the Democrats for $2 million. House Majority PAC, presumably, is also a Democratic PAC. Um, and then when you go to the next person, which was this, uh, Mickey, I think is her name, um, Mickey Sherrill, okay, so we go to Mickey Sherrill. You're just going to see the same kind of patterns that we're going to see. So uh, I'm going to have to read more of the original article about these folks uh, that I found with the World Socialist website. Um, and we can then contrast them briefly to the uh, progressive Democrats. Um, so here's Cheryl with their, um, and this is astonishing, I believe. Okay, so there's a total amount spent of $12 million in this race, or no, $7 million. And uh, seven and a half million versus one and a half million, and then the outside spending. Uh, let's see how that's doing. So, uh, not as much. Um, so, we've got a million, uh, two million dollars worth of probably um, anti uh, Cheryl advertising going on. Um, and um, so, what we're seeing here, uh, where is that? New Jersey Republican State Committee Heritage Action. Uh, New Jersey Citizens Alliance. So finding this money, it's not that easy um, because it may uh, be, yeah, it is not that easy to find where this two million of opposition money is going because we just don't see any number near that for a Republican groups. So maybe it was opposition money during the primary. Um, I'm just not certain. Um, and the contributors for Mickey um, Cheryl, um, let's, uh, these are sorted by amount. Goldman Sachs, great. Kirkland Ellis, Emily's List, Google, J.P. Morgan, Blackstone. So this is a heavily financially, uh, uh financial sector oriented person. Of course, maybe that's because of the, uh, the area that it's in. Um, So let's just take a look at uh, Spamberger. Um, so on the summary level for the Demo the uh, Bernie Sanders progressives, um, Alejandro Ocasio-Cortez, okay, she raised about a million and a half. She got a lot of money from out of state. She was a national cause celebre. Um, whereas Chewy Garcia raised 400,000. Deborah Halland is a well-connected lady. This. Uh, uh, Indian lady in uh, Kansas, lady uh, Native American lady. Um, she raised a fair amount of money. Uh, we might want to look at um, what kind of outside money was at play in her race. Um, but what we see is just, uh, before I go away on this Mickey or, or whoever it is, uh, what was her name again? Um, uh, the, well, oh, we're back to Slotkin again. Well, we saw the big check for Slotkin, so never mind about that. Um, for Spamberger, uh, Spamberger, um, we wanted to see outside spending. It's a massive amount of money on the inside, and it's quite massive on the out as well. Um, so who's writing the big checks? Congressional Leadership Fund. So this is the, uh, the Republican version of the uh, House Fund, uh, the House Fund. So she got... Uh, this um, person got uh, a nice cool check for over a million dollars from the, uh, well, is it quite that much? It's, yeah, $1.3 million. So quite a lot of money going on here. And Citizens United, uh, 712000 so that's interesting. Uh, so these people aren't necessarily... Um, uh, all aligned with just negative forces. So we have to continue to look. 
So to conclude, we have to look more deeply into these candidates. They're clearly selected. They're given millions and millions and millions of dollars, much, much more than uh, uh, typical Bernie Kratz, more on the lines of very high-powered corporate Democrats and Republicans. Uh, so that's it for now. Thank you very much for listening. Good night and good luck.